Pastor Bob, you're up. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, we are blessed, are we not? Amen. You know, uh, Pastor Dave was here last week, and uh, it's funny how we identify individuals at times. He could be the evangelist. He's the uh, man from Kentucky that talked funny. You know? Uh, you know, Dave and I have a, a history and also uh, where he's from. Uh, years ago, we used to get, take mission trips. I used to take the youth uh, to Kentucky. I did like 10 years. And uh, there's places up in the holler, uh, Hazard County, uh, you know, it's only about an hour up the annual Boone Parkway, you know. <laughs> and, and these are real places and real names, you know. And uh, kind of uh, their individuals, when they live up in the holler, are very poor. Uh, but it, it seems, you know, from rich to poor, how we identify individuals is always by externals. They're from Kentucky, they talk funny. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, I was preaching at one of the churches in Kentucky and uh, had my suit on in the morning, you know, and uh, then I went to the community pool in the afternoon. It was on a Sunday, so we weren't working that day. And I'm at the community pool and this boy about 12 years old comes up to me and he, he goes, hey, you a preacher? Are, are you a preacher? I say, yeah, I'm a preacher. Why you got all those tattoos on you? <laughs> so, so he was looking at the externals, you know, of, of things, you know, and we, we do that, you know, we, we identify and we look at the externals. And we're going to be looking at today how God looks at the heart, see, not at the outward things. And uh, how, what we seem to, to tend to sow, uh, we reap from it. There's a passage in Galatians 6 we're going to be looking at uh, this morning, and I just titled this message, God Cannot Be Mocked. God Cannot Be Mocked. And, and why I say that is that God knows us, right? He knows our hearts. And uh, sometimes my <coughs> spiritual life and my natural life are in conflict, but yet I go around with this picture of a spiritual life, but really I'm mocking God the way God lives at times. Of course, let me get to this. Do you know that uh, when Jesus was crucified anyway, and uh, there were the Roman soldiers all around Jesus uh, they stripped him of his clothes and they put on a robe and they bowed homage to him. They made a crown of thorns and put him. They made fun of Jesus. Yeah. And it was almost, in one sense, like a, a worship service because they worshipped him. Uh, they said, oh, king of kings. Uh, yet, but their hearts were different. They were making fun of Jesus. And I wonder if sometimes that when we come to church and we go through the outward things, but our hearts are far from them, that we, in some ways, without saying it, mock God. Just the thought, this is not where the whole message is going, but this title came from there because it's out of our text in Galatians 6. I don't want my life to be a mockery, but sometimes it is. Sometimes I fall prey to the old natural man. We're going to see there's a battle here. There's the old man and the new man. Do you know the Bible says that we're a new creation in Christ Jesus? If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you have been sealed for the day of redemption, but you also have the Spirit of God within you that guides you, leads you, and transforms you. Okay? 
But yet there's this osculation that happens in our life. And I don't know, there are some though that become believers that remain on a certain plane, which is a carnal plane, carnality. See, there's three planes that we live in. The natural plane or the natural man. Or a person that believes in Jesus Christ and yet he's a carnal man, worldly. And then the third plane is the spiritual. Okay? And sometimes we oscillate between carnal and spiritual. And we're going to define what they are and, and, and look at that and what happens there. Because when we sow into the natural man, we reap destruction, is what the scripture is going to say. When we follow the ways of the old man, which will identify to, which is bitterness, which is anger, which is frustration, which is, is judging, and which is critical. They are all the things of the natural man. Amen. And when you sow into that, we reap from that. And that's why it is a fixed law. God will not be mocked, is what the scripture says. So when you sow into the to, into the uh, natural, we're going to reap destruction from. It. Just think of, I mean, look at our world today in that sense. You know, the, the natural man, okay, the carnal man, the carnal Christian, and then the spiritual man. But if the natural man, look at our world, the mess it is today because of what we're selling into. You, know, you see the destruction all around us. You know, Jesus put it plainly like this. It's not what uh, goes into a man that makes him unclean. It's what comes out of the man that makes him unclean. And what comes out of a man, up out of the heart, the mouth speaks, where there is murder and there's, there's hatred and there's bitterness and there's the, the divisiveness. And there's all those things that come out of the man, right, uh, that we see manifesting in our earth today. And uh, what do we do at times to change those things? We hear shootings and so on. What we want to do is we want to enact more laws and restrict things. You can't restrict the heart, amen? Yeah. You really can't. It has to be a change of heart. We try to hold that down, but it can manifest in other ways. It, it comes out. God will not be mocked. These things will manifest. Let me read for you the text and then we'll, we'll come back to some of this. This is Galatians chapter 6 and 1 through uh, 9 is what we will read. And I'll start with the first verse. Brethren, if uh, a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are what? Spiritual, restore such a one. A spirit of gentleness. Restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you not be tempted. Let me just explain on that for one minute. He's talking about the church. This text is not for the unchurched or the unbeliever. This is for the church. And it's saying if there's someone in your congregation or what gets caught up in sin, you who are spiritual, restore them gentle. That word restore is bringing back something that has been broken, almost in a medical term, if you had a broken arm or something, is to restore the, the individual. Because that's, that's the God we serve, right? That God doesn't want us to be on the outskirts. Now, first and foremost, if you've trusted Jesus Christ and your Lord and Savior, you believe he died on the cross for your sins, you bowed your knee before him and said, yes, I am a sinner and I need saving, and yet I take you to be my Lord and Savior now, and I trust you, and I'm putting my full rest on you, the Bible says we're born again. We're born again. But does it stop there? No, it doesn't stop there. You're sealed for that day of redemption. Okay? But now it's a lifelong sanctification process. 
that happens. It's a yielding and wielding. What I mean by that is we yield to that spirit daily so he can have his perfect work in our life. When we don't yield to the spirit, okay, we reap the manifestation of the natural man. And that's what we're going to look at. I hope I'm not losing you. Anyway, no. So he speaks in the first word there. And then he, uh, verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens, for this fulfills the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks of himself something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. I just pause again with that right there. You know, that pride comes before the fall, doesn't it? When we think of ourselves more than, more highly than we ought to, right? We, we even elevate ourselves beyond God at times. There again, it's even a mockery at times when we make certain decisions in our lives that we should be asking the Lord for direction. Anyone ever there? Amen. But when we think of ourselves more highly than we ought to, it's what the scripture is telling us here. We deceive ourselves. But then verse 4 says, Let each one examine his own work or his own self, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not another. Meaning, I'm not judging my life by someone else's. It, you know, in the society that we're in today, we always do that. And then even in the church, we have like a culture of holiness. And what I mean by that is we judge our walk with the Lord by how others are. Let me clarify a little bit. Almost in a sense, we allow the, the natural man to take place and gossip comes in. And we tear down someone else so we may be built up. That is a poor place to be, right? You know what the Apostle Paul says in the same passage, or actually uh, the chapter before? He tells us that this is chapter 5, verse 15, if you just look at it. It says, but if you bite and devour one another, beware at least you will be consumed by one another. Wow. You see that verse 15? But he said, if you're led by the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit. If you're led by the Spirit, keep in, keep in step with the Spirit because the Holy Spirit will, will not guide you into those things. The Holy Spirit will guide you out of them. There's a battle that goes on. Right? So you see that. Now, Verse 6, going back to chapter 6, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Now that, that's a good preacher's word because you know what that's saying there. Anyone want to kind of take a shot on that? What that's saying there, if someone's teaching you the word, someone is training you up, you are to share all good things with that individual. That's what that's saying. And a lot of sometimes preachers use that for that's why you know, take care of business. <laughs> but I, I hope and pray, and I don't think you've ever heard me trying to pry people for finances. See, God is my source, and God will take care of me. I trust him. I believe him. And I wouldn't take a verse like that to pry. It's just a side note. But that's what that verse means. Okay? Here we go. We're down. Verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For if he sows to his flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But if he sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Father, I do pray for the great understanding of your word. 
I pray you speak to us this morning. Father, your word is for us. And this is to build us up, to encourage us to know, Lord, that you have put something in place, that it's a fixed law. If we would apply it, we are blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. I have to repeat, this in verse 7 is being spoken to a Christian. The reason I will tell you that do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Flip the page and look at verse 16 on chapter 5. Okay? 16 on chapter 5. I say then, walk in the Spirit... And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. You do not do the things you want to do. There is a battle that goes on within us. Anyone ever have that battle? Anyone have that little voice that tries to steer us from doing the wrong thing? Yeah. Well, the carnal man gives way to it. The natural man, he's bound to it. That means sin said jump and he says how high and he goes. Can you remember your life apart from God? Just living a natural man, going about your business, doing what you wanted to do. We were choosing, we thought, we really didn't have a choice. We were, we were dead in sins in our trespasses. We were far from God. And God in his love was wooing us one way or another and calling us. Because he doesn't want anyone to be far from him. Do you know that? That, that is the purpose of the Lord. He doesn't want us to be far from him. And yet, <clears throat> when we become Christians, we see that there's another work within us. It's a fixed law. This is not spiritual karma, but it is a fixed law. You go to the top of the church and jump off, you're coming down. <laughs> right? And what he's saying is if you sow into that old man, that natural man, you're going to reap those things. What are some of those things? Well, you know, Paul listed some of those things, but these are more of, if you look in chapter 5 and you just, you, you, you look at, uh, say, verse 19, and it says this, Now the works of the flesh are evident. And then he writes them out. You see that? The works of the flesh are evident. What are they? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, uh, adultery, sorcery, hatred. All those things are laid out for the natural man. Right? That's, if we don't have the Lord, all those things are laid out. Now that's a, for an unbeliever. For a believer, what is, what is for a believer? What is... Believer has for verse 22. What's verse 22? The, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And I can explain that in, in the whole context of the book of Galatians. But to think about the contrast there. Amen? Amen. But what about when we want to do right and sin is right there trying to drag us down? You know, Paul himself wrote about that in Romans 7. He says, I do what I do not want to do. If I do what I do not want to do, it is not I who do it, but it is sin in me that does it. He said, "This, oh, what a wretched man I am. Who's going to save me from this body of death? When he cries out, he says, 
the Lord Jesus. You see, when we cry out to the Lord in the times of our struggles and our mishaps, He's faithful and just to deliver us from ourself. Anyone had trouble with me? <laughs> you know? I, I read a book from Kyle. I don't know if it said the end of me. But wonderful. <laughs> but I fit myself right into the pages. You know? The biggest struggles I have in life are here. Anyone want to admit that? Or we just go about and be carnal. Now, do you know? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Boy, I haven't spent too much time on this. I just, just wanted to let you know how, how God operates because he doesn't want anyone to be separate. Sometimes he allows things to get into our lives. To, you ever hear me say this? We are transformed by fire and we're motivated by heat. Right? No one moves in their spiritual, carnal life unless there's some motivation behind it. Anyone to a city, man? We're transformed by fire and motivated by heat. Okay. Here, the Apostle Paul deals with the church at Corinth. Chapter 3, 1 Corinthians 3. Did you turn there? Listen to what it says. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal. You see that? As to babes in Christ. He says, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Wow. So, so God himself has given us and the empowerment to live a spiritual life. Right? But we oscillate back and live like mere men. You know that you, if you have been born again, the Spirit of God lives within you to help you. So those times when we fall prey to the old man, I would say to the old man, sit down and take a seat behind me. Because he keeps getting up and raising his ugly little head in our lives. But he doesn't have to. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The Bible says that you have been given these precious promises so you may escape the corruption in this evil present age that we participate in the divine nature. Isn't that a wonderful thing? To participate in the divine nature so we can overcome those things that are as envy, that are as uh, divisions and are behaving like mere men. You are on a higher plane, friend. And it's not you. It's not you. It's yielding to him. Our problem is when we get into the way of taking it on ourselves. Meaning that, you know, every aspect of this life that we live, are we living on the spiritual plane or on the carnal plane? Do you know that the divorce rate in the church is just as high as it is in the world? <laughs> just as high. The immorality within, within the church setting is just as... The, the world and the church has blended together. You see? And why is that? Are people still saved? Yeah, absolutely. But we act like mere men. And we're not. Is what the Bible tells us. See, we, we give way to it. So when Paul came up against, when he's writing this, he was writing to the individuals that were having problems within the church. In chapter 5, just turn with me to chapter 5 for a minute. And this is how he dealt with the problems in the church. 
he talked about it was actually the first chapter uh, 5 verse 1 it's actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as not even even named among the Gentiles he's saying the stuff that's going on within the church is not even named among those outside the church and he says what happened was a man took his father's wife and he was it was in the world, the things that were happening, if you read the text there. But this is how Paul handled it. Look at verse 5. He says this. Deliver such a one to Satan. <laughs> wow. Why? That sounds very cruel, doesn't it? That sounds awful, but he gives the answer here. Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. So that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? What is the most important thing? What is do we want to reap the destruction or is keeping the spirit well? In the Old Testament, you could look this up, we don't have time to go through it, but Isaiah chapter 5. It's a parable in a, of God planting the vineyard. You know the parable? He plants a beautiful vineyard. He puts a hedge around it. He tends it. It's the picture of Israel. It's the picture of God's people. He nourishes the vineyard. But he says he goes to look for grapes. And what do you say? No, no harvest. The grapes were bad. And God, in his love and his mercy, said something like this. I moved my hedge down. Not so destruction would come, but there will be a change. Do you think sometimes when we walk in the natural and the carnal that a hedge is being let down so that we are changed and transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Do you, do you think that that is, what I'm getting at is that sometimes we think things that come into our life uh, is from our own self. Do you know that? And, and God just allows at those things to come in so that we would have a change of direction. I know we don't like to hear that. I, you want to think that God's going to rescue us if we live in our carnality. It's not that God sends lightning down. It's we're receiving the due penalty of our own decisions. Amen? What are the due penalty of our own decisions? What we sow into the natural man. It's a fixed law. We're going to reap what we put into it. Now, I remember my children, you know, I used to tell them certain things or do around the house, and I would catch out of the peripheral <laughs> mock. <laughs> you ever have kids that do that? And they would mock the instructions from their father or their mother. And there'd be penalties to pay, and not that we would come at them with the belt, that, that I think we should have, but no. <laughs> the decisions they make, or made, was their own penalties, you see. Whether it was, I'll give you a quick example. My son was riding his street motorcycle with uh, his friend John, and I said, watch going up there. I said, uh, it was near your house, Charlie, around that turn. They had fertilizer on them. Somebody spilled fertilizer. I said, watch going up there. And I knew that there were, wouldn't you know, they went around that turn, and the bike went out from them, and we went and picked John up and took him to the hospital. Um, because, you know, you didn't want to hear what I was saying. 
that up there there's some dangers, friend. And if it falls right in to God's word that gives us instruction. It, it tells us that the prudent man sees danger and he takes refuge. But the foolish man continues on his way and suffers for it. Right? Because I'm selling in to my natural man. You know? And they're just as shrewd, if I can use that word, and I don't know my grammar's correct, of what happens when carnality and those things we live by uh, are just bringing devastation into the lives of not only ourselves, but to others. And God in his mercy doesn't want us there, right? He doesn't want you to have to feel the pain of your own, your own decisions. But the fixed realities are that majority of times we do. Now the only time, now this law is, re, re, that's irreversible. It's kind of like the, the law of gravity. But the only time, and I have to say this, that this law is reversible is when a natural man, someone who's been selling all their life into destruction, comes to the place and said, Jesus, I want you as my Lord and Savior. Now the fixed law is stopped. And God changes directions. Actually says that the individual that trusts Jesus now comes from death to life. Hallelujah. So the very fixed law of sowing and reaping is stopped right there for the individual that trust the Lord Jesus Christ. But when they become a Christian, as the text we are talking about today, and we continue to live in carnality, then we reap from it, right? What's part of carnality? How many know that anger, bitterness? Jesus came not to change the outward man, but the inward to give us the right disposition to live a Christian life. You know, I started this out with the individual looking at what a pastor should be. And that's what a pastor is. He has a suit on. And then you look at someone and you judge him differently. It is the interior of where we're changed by the disposition of the Holy Spirit. You see, because inside, friends, is where there's malice, where there's <coughs> divisiveness, where there's anger, all those things in there that only God can change. Because I'll tell you, He will not be mocked. These things will manifest no matter how much you try to resist with your white nub. You can't. They will come out, they will destroy your family. That, that would destroy the communities, that would destroy the church if we live in Cornell. That's what the Bible is talking about. We can make the decision if you're born again to say yes to the Lord and no to self. Help me. So, <clears throat> I love the Word of God because it's on the level of where we need to understand, amen? It, it, it hits me right where I'm at. I don't know exactly where, only God knows where your heart is at. But I'm here to say yes to the Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me with the struggles that I have. Because you know what the Bible says? If we say that we're without sin, we lie and the truth is not in us. You know that? So if we could sit there and say, I'm in good shape, I got it all together, we lie and the truth is not in us, is what the scriptures say. That's powerful, eh? Would it? 
hit me right between the eyes. So I, I got to confess, Lord, help me. Sometimes there's bitterness in my heart. Sometimes there's anger in my heart. Lord, help me with those things. I want to walk in 6 or 522 in love and joy and peace and patience and fruitfulness and goodness and self-control. These are all the fruit of the Spirit that are available to the Christian. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We go on, and so I pray, Lord, as we close this service, and I just get excited about your word because the answer is there. And help us, Lord, to uh, yield to you. And, uh, Father, to recognize that um, it is fixed. It, it is a law that uh, we can't fight against, Lord. What we are sowing, uh, if it's in the natural sense, we will reap the path of that. And yet, conversely, if we sow to the Spirit, hallelujah, we will reap everything that has already been spoken. Thank you for that. I choose to receive that peace. And that love. Bless each one today, Father. If someone's here struggling, Lord, and uh, I know we all struggle in that area, so help them, Lord. Help them to examine their hearts today. Help them to see, Lord, that we might be living in carnality. Posing things unto you. So God bless them and help them and grant them your peace, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.